Hello and welcome to this session on SOAP UI beginner tutorial and today we are going to learn about script assertions in SOAP UI and we will see what is a script assertion, how do we add script assertions in SOAP UI. We will look at some different script assertion that we can use on XML and JSON messages and we will look at some tips and tricks. So let's get started and let me open my SOAP UI and SOAP UI is up and running. I will just close this starter page and here I'm going to this project that we have used in the earlier session as well. Here I have added a test suite and inside the test suite I have already added a test case assertions and there are two requests. One is a SOAP request and other one is a REST request here and we have already seen some of the very basic assertions in our last session so we have already added some common assertions both in SOAP and REST request so now we have to go with script assertion today so here if you go to assertions tab below here and then go to this plus icon click here and in the script section you have script assertion so you can add it from here however to have script assertion work you should always first run your request and the reason you should run your request is because let me just go back to my notes and I have already added some notes here so script assertion works on the last response received in SOAP UI and it works with a message exchange object I will let you know in a moment what is message exchange however we have to have some request executed before we go to script assertion so what I will do is I will just run this SOAP request and it is executed it is a request that where we give a country code and it gives us the country currency and as of now it failed because there was some assertion that failed let me go yes in the last session we added an assertion that we wanted a response before 200 milliseconds and the actual time taken was 892 milliseconds so let me just make it as 1000 milliseconds so that our request shows in green and yes now it is pass and now I will go to the assertion tab here and go to this plus icon and go to script and click on script assertion and say add so here is our script assertion window so basically here we get a window where we can write a groovy script let me just expand the window so that you can see it properly so here we have to write our script assertions so basically these are groovy scripts that we can write here and also we can run it and see the response here in the log section and before we go there let us go back to my notes and here I have written it works with message exchange object and message exchange object store all the details of the last request and response so in our case we executed our a SOAP request so if we go to the message exchange object here this object will store uh, all the details about the last request and response and to save some time I have some of the assertions here so let me just go and look at this the very first assertion we will understand is message exchange dot time taken so this particular function time taken will return us the time taken by the request and then we can assert whether it is greater than or less than something so here I am saying it should be let us say less than 400 milliseconds so this is in millisecond if I run it now from this green button let us see so here it is saying false because the actual time was 892 milliseconds and we are checking it should be less than 400 milliseconds so now let me just make it as uh, 1000 milliseconds or let us say 900 milliseconds and run it again and you can see script assertion passed let me add the other assertion this one and do not worry I will provide all these notes and all these scripts in the description section of this video so let us see this uh, so basically we have this particular assertion so here I am just using log.info to log this on the console so first I will get the endpoint and here is the endpoint and now for assertion 
I can actually compare it. So this is my endpoint. I will store it inside a string. So I will just say def endpoint equals this. This is the endpoint and in the script assertion I will say assert message exchange dot get endpoint equals equals endpoint and let me see if this passes and yes it passes so now every time this request will run this endpoint will be validated if we get anything other than this it will fail for example you can see if I add anything here ABC and now if I run this it fails right so this is how we can check the endpoint now let me go and say uh, get time taken is again you can just if you want to get the time taken we have already seen this time taken so this will be enough and then we have this session for checking the headers so let me also see this so here we are saying message exchange dot response headers and any header that you want to check and you can compare it or you can also validate whether it is null or not null so if I go to the response and see see we have different headers here so content length is one of the response headers and here if you just want to validate some particular value or just want to validate the occurrence or existence of that header we can use this particular script assertion message exchange dot response headers name of the header and then whatever value we want to compare with of course I do not need to log this so I will just close or delete that and I pressed control D on my keyboard to delete the entire line so that is a shortcut now let me go to the next which is check for attachments again I will copy this and paste it here again I do not need the log info you can use log info if you want to you know while you are creating the assertions if you want to log and see something so that it will be logged here in the console and then you can create your assertions and then you can remove or comment out the log statements so here I am saying message exchange dot response attachments dot length so I am saying that this response should not have any attachments in case there is any attachment you can give the number here so this is how you can check the attachments in the response and then here is something very important here we are exactly checking the values in the response message or the notes or the data in the response so here what we are saying is we are using groovy utils and this is one of the classes in soap ui inside groovy so this is something you have to use this is by default and then i am seeing request holder groovy utils dot get xml holder message exchange dot request content so this request holder will contain the request message now similarly for response holder I am saying groovy utils dot get xml holder in the brackets message exchange dot response content so with message exchange dot response content I will get the response message and I am storing it in the response holder and then I am going to get the value for some particular node so if I go to my response you can see let me just minimize this and show you the response let me expand this window and yes you can see this is my response and here uh, in this response I have a name by rupees so this is the currency name and the tag is or node is m colon s name and this node is inside m colon country currency result so I will create the xpath and also in the last session we have already seen how to create xpath and json path so for this I will go to script a session and I can say response holder dot get node value and this is my path so I want to get the node value from this m underscore s name and I am storing it into some reference variable so I can say this is a currency name and now I am asserting so now actually I have already stored this so I do not need this I can just say currency name equals equals rupees and let me run this 
and it passes if there is something else for example i am saying currency name should be equal to something else it should fail and yes you can see this is failed okay and of course i am not using anything with the request i am not doing anything with the request so even if i comment out the request portion it should work fine and yes it is working fine okay uh, let me go back to my notes uh, so this is a, a script you can use to just get the xml message so to get the xml out of the response so you can just use it if i do log.info and resp this is the variable where i have stored this response and run this so you can see it will just uh, print out the entire soap response or the xml response so this is something you can use if you want and maybe uh, with the scripting you might want to do some more assertions with this response so this is something will be very handy and useful now if you see most of the assertions we have done is are common to both xml and json and there are some assertions that we did only for an xml response now if i just close this and we have seen all our assertions have passed and now there are some assertions that we can do on a response in case you are getting a json response so in my case uh, i have a rest request if i run this it probably fetches a json response and yes you can see it has no xml content but i go to json and there is a json response so basically this is a uh, get country by name if i say uh, here country name i am saying taiwan i am getting all the details of taiwan here like the capital the country the region right so now here for a json response let us go again to our scripts click on this plus icon and go to script assertion add and again we have got a window to create our script assertions and here let me expand it a little yes now here let us see some of the assertions we can do on a json message or json response so this is one script so the very first thing is you will have to import a groovy.json.json slurper and this will be used to get the json response or fetch the json response so we say response message again we are using message exchange object dot response dot response content this will fetch the response content in a variable called response message here and then using the json slurper class we are passing the text which is this response message this one right and we are storing it in a json variable so any variable name you can give here and now we have our response message in this variable and now we can do the other assertions for example this is one assertion for nodes or the node values and here i am saying so see now json variable has the entire response and with json dot you can actually get any node inside the message so for example here if you see capital and capital i just want to i can see this is one of the parent nodes it is not a nested node so i can directly say json dot capital and i can say to string and i am validating that it is not equal to null and again i am in the next session i am validating name dot to string should be equal to taiwan so here if you see a uh, name i am validating it should be equal to taiwan and let me run this and this is passing right if i use any other thing here or in the response if i get anything else it will fail and you can see the failure so every time i run the request i am expecting these values to be present and of course uh, in the last session we have seen how to create the json path so in case you have a very complex json this is something very uh, straightforward we have just some parent nodes and not so much of nesting but in case you have some complex json then you can always uh, go to json finder that we have already seen in our last session so json path finder we have and we also have a chrome extension so in my case i had already added that to chrome extension json pathfinder and we have learned about it in our last session you can click here 
and you can give your JSON for example this is my JSON response I will give it here and then whatever element you want to search or create JSON path for for example region I will give it here in the search node and then say submit and here it will give you the JSON path for your node and if it has multiple occurrences it will give you all the paths here as of now I had a single occurrence for region so I am getting uh, this JSON path so this is going to be very handy when you are working with JSON responses let me go back to my SOAP UI and go to script assertion for JSON messages so here is how you can assert the node values in case of JSON messages and there are these assertions and there are actually these scripts that you can use and will be very handy so let me see yes so this script message exchange dot model item dot test step dot name is to get the name of the test step so just in case you want to validate the test step name there can be you know various reasons you would want to just check it so that will give you the test step name so I'm also uh, printing it out on the console so if I just run this you can see it has given me the test step name here which is get countries by name and you can see this is the name of the test step here get countries by name okay and then we have this another script where we are saying message exchange dot response content x xml and then to string so what we have done here is we are from message exchange we are getting the response content as xml converting it to string and then we are storing in a variable called xml hold and if i run this you can see this is the output so this is given giving me all the message in a xml format and then using this you can do multiple kind of checks and validations on your message so this was all about script assertions and we have seen how do you use script assertions in SOAP UI so with script assertions uh, things becomes very easy because in coding or in scripting you can do whatever you want whatever assertions you want to put and script assertions are very commonly used in SOAP UI so I hope this session was very useful for you I will meet you in the next episode of SOAP UI thank you for watching